Good evening and welcome to our 2021 Light Up A Life service. My name is Grant Dasmar and I am the Chief Executive of Hospice of the Valleys and I'm here to welcome you to the service today. And today's service is a virtual one, as you can tell, because you're watching online. And that's partly to keep people safe and partly to allow more and more people to participate in the service without them having to crowd into a space or into a room as well. And this is our second year of our virtual service. And fingers crossed, it may be the last virtual service. We may get back to normal next year. There will, however, be two smaller face-to-face -face services next week in local churches, and I will give you the details of those at the end of this service as well. As you may be aware, this year, Hospice of the Valleys marked its 30th anniversary, 30 years of serving the local community, starting with the tenacity of some local residents who wanted to ensure that excellent palliative care and end-of-life care was available to the residents of Blyne Gwent. And it's a legacy that we are proud to keep going at the moment, and we want to deliver that service to the local population for as long as they need us. But over the last 12 months, along with those, support, those that we support, we have faced a number of challenges, on top of those that normally come with a diagnosis of a terminal illness. And these have been obviously linked to the pandemic. And the last year for all of us has also been a period where there have been long separations for many of us. There have been long periods where we've been unable to see friends and family face to face. And for some of us, it has meant that we've not been able to be there at the end of life to say our goodbyes and spend time with those we love most. And for that, experience has meant for many people an even more intense feeling of grief and loss around this time. And our bereavement service here has certainly felt that. We've had a lot more demand on the service and a lot different, different types of demand as well. And we try to support as many people as we can over the year. But tonight, we're here to share our thoughts and our memories of those who can no longer be with us. And we, though we think about them every day, this is a time within this service to dedicate some minutes and some moments to remember them. Thinking of the happy memories and the times we spent together and the way they've influenced us. And although we're not in the same building at the moment, there is still an opportunity to share together. And recognise that we do have suffered a loss, but also acknowledge the joy and the happiness we had when we were spent times together. We all feel the influence day in and day out. So I feel the influence of my own late parents every day, pretty much. I, I think I hear it in the phrases I use with my own children, and I think I hear it and feel it when uh, the way I react to opportunities and to challenges, I still hear their voice and their advice, some good, some bad, but I still hear it all. And it's shaped the person I am today. I'm sure that's the same for you as well. And this is a chance for me to spend a bit of time to thank them and to remember them and cherish those memories as well. So I'm hoping that the service will provide some solace as we face our losses and will provide some smiles with the memories as well as possibly some tears as the memories come back to us during this, this period. And during the service, you'll be able to see the names and the dedications of those who've been remembered for the light, our Light Up A Life service on the screen behind me. They will continue during the service as well. Now, without further ado, as they say, I will hand over to Reverend Roy Watson, who's the chaplain for Hospice of the Valleys, who has continued to support many, many families through the last 18 months, and has been a vital part of the wider team of the hospice, and he's a very safe pair of hands to lead the Light Up A Life service this evening. So if I hand over to you, Roy. Thank you, Grant. Well, welcome to our Light Up A Life service. Uh, we celebrate this evening good lives. Uh, we remember them with gratitude and affection, and they will never leave our memory. This morning, I turned on the radio to BBC Wales and the topic was all about Grief Awareness Week. And various friends were interviewed by Dot Davis about their reaction to grief. And I thought to myself that the Hospice of the Valleys are to the forefront in that arena. Not only do they deal with those sadly at the end of their lives, but afterwards, they are always available to deal with bereavement. That's our friends here at the hospice. So if you have bereavement problems, well, please be in touch with the hospice on 01495 717 277. 
Also, can I say this to my friends at the hospice? One of my tasks is to take funerals. And sadly, when you're a minister in the valley, there are many of those, over a hundred a year, in fact. But before every funeral, I visit the family to receive the information I need to give the eulogy. And time and time again, I'm asked to thank the hospice for the loving and compassionate care they give at the end of life. That help is obviously greatly appreciated and well done to our staff. Well, let's have a brief look at the Christmas story. A friend of mine in Cardiff listens to my weekly service on Blind Gwent Radio on Sunday mornings, and he says that eight minutes you give on a Saturday morning is just right. Any longer than I lose interest. So let's see if I can do it all in eight minutes. Well, first the Christmas story from the Bible, and you'll find this in St. Luke chapter 2. At that time, the Emperor Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the Roman Empire. And when this first census took place, Quirinius was the governor of Syria. And everyone then went to register himself, each to his own town. And Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to the town of Bethlehem in Judea, the birthplace of King David. And Joseph went there because he was a descendant of David. He went to register with Mary, who was promised in marriage to him. And she was with child. And while they were in Bethlehem, the time came for her to have her baby. And she gave birth to her first son, wrapped him in strips of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them to stay in the inn. Well, what sort of person is this Jesus born so long ago? I'll answer that in this way with a little story. There's a story of a judge, and he, the thief appears before the judge, and this particular thief had stolen five tomatoes, apparently, from, from Asda's. So the judge said, well, how many tomatoes were there in the packet you stole? Five, came the reply. Right, said the judge, you can go to prison for five days. Is there anything you want to say in your defence? Not really, said the thief, but I'm jolly glad I put that tin of beans back. Well, that judge seems to have it just right. On the one hand, yes, there is the majesty, the judgement, and the giving of that judgment to the thief. But also it seems on the other hand that there is a compassionate man in this judge. And okay, it's a lenient sentence and there is a, a certain element of forgiveness in his voice. But this is also true, isn't it, of Jesus. When Jesus comes, yes, there is the majesty. He is the son of God. We do pray to him as Christians. We acknowledge his power and might. But also this Jesus is one who walks our way. He has brothers and sisters. We read that in Mark 6, verse 3. Jesus is brought up in a normal home. He learns from his father the trade of a carpenter. When he starts his ministry, he knew the acclamation of people, but also he knew of the criticism of people. He died as we have to, but in his ministry he promised the way of forgiveness. From the cross he says, Father, forgive, for they know not what they do. And he leads the way to eternity. He says to us, because I live, you will live as well. So Jesus walks our way. He's experienced everything that we experience. So pray to him. Seek his guidance and strength. And he will bring comfort to our souls and joy to our lives. Well, I'm delighted now to welcome Kim Jones, who is our Deputy Head of Clinical Services and she is going to do us a reading entitled Word of Hope. Thank you, Kim. Good evening. You can shed tears that they have gone, or you can smile because they have lived. You can close your eyes and pray that they will come back. Or you can open your eyes and see all that they have left. Your heart can be empty because you can't see them. Or you can be full of the love that you shared. You can turn your back on tomorrow and relive yesterday. Or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember them and only that they have gone. 
or you can cherish the memory and let it live on. You can cry and close your mind, be empty and turn your back, or you can do what they would have wanted, to smile, to open your eyes, to love and to go on. Thank you. Thank you, Kim, for that uh, lovely reading. Well, I'm delighted to welcome to our service this evening, Rob Westall. Now, unbeknown to him, when we have this radio service on a Sunday morning, when I do my eight minutes, also in the service, we have some music from Katie Drahan and also Rob Westall. So I own up, Rob, we have used your music and your singing on many occasions. We're very grateful for that. It goes down extremely well. So thanks for for that on a Sunday morning, but also being here tonight as well. And I understand that you're going to perform now a new arrangement of Hark the Herald Angels Sing, uh, written and recorded with Katie, and it's been released uh, tomorrow. But uh, tonight you sing solo, uh, Hark the Herald, so perhaps you could do that now. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, by the wonders of modern technology, um, Katie will be singing this with me. This is Hark the Herald, hallelujah. Sing. 
in any act of worship, we have a time of prayer. And in the life of the church, we have a, a book of prayers for every Sunday in the Christian year. So this coming Sunday is the second Sunday of Advent, and this is our prayer on that day, which we will use tonight. Loving Jesus, we thank you that you have come to be with us. You came as a child so that we could see how humble God could be. You came to teach us love so that we must learn to love one another as you have loved us. And you have come to show mercy that we can be healed through our forgiveness. And from the cross, you say to us, Father, forgive for they know not what they do. And you have taught us, Jesus, the way to eternal life. And in your name, we can be saved to the uttermost. So loving Jesus, word of God, we thank you for your life of humble love in our midst and for the example of those who have followed you in every age. So encourage us in their hope, unite us with them in your praise. In your name we ask this prayer. Amen. Well now we're going to ask Rob Westall to sing for us again. And this time it's the well-known carol, Silent Night, Holy Night. Thank you, Rob. Thank you very much indeed. Before I begin this this last song, um, God bless you if you're watching. Um, I've been asked to pass on a message by my cousin Jonathan Roberts, who is watching all the way in Lincoln. His mother, Kay Roberts, my auntie, um, benefited from the service of Hospice of the Valleys, and it's been a real honour and privilege to be able to sing for this fantastic charity and all the work that they do indeed. So if you're watching, God bless you. This is Silent Night. Oh, 
And it comes to me now to say a few thank yous and to end today's service. So thank you, firstly, for those of you who are tuning in today live or watching the recording of this as we broadcast from the day centre here in Ebervale. And thank you also for those of you who supported the Light Up a Life appeal, either sending in a dedication to a loved one or sending in a donation. It's very much appreciated. And I hope that you've enjoyed the service and have taken the time and you found some solace in what we've been doing today. I'd also like to thank the Reverend Roy Watson for leading the service so well again this year and the Rob Westall for giving his time and singing so wonderfully for us today. Very much appreciated. And for Kim, the reading, I know she was nervous, but as ever, has done a wonderful job with the reading. And those who have helped to make this broadcast possible as well, so Patrick O'Leary for the sound and audio, and Kevin Phillips at the team at Cymru Creations for the editing as well, and Carl McCarthy, who you might hear his camera clicking in the background as I mention his name. And also for our main sponsor, Ty Callum, who've supported the event financially and helped promote it as well. And they've helped us in many ways over the last year, so thank you very much to them. And I would also like to thank Tanya Burgess. And if you did receive one of the Light Up A Life packs through the, your door, or you've seen it on the website, it was Tanya's kindness in sharing her story of her own experience of bereavement and loss that helped us, use it, that helped us promote the campaign this year. So thank you for sharing that with us as well. There's a couple more things to mention just before we go. And that is that there is still time to dedicate a light on the tree, either on the website, at our own website at Hospice of the Valleys. There's a virtual tree you can click through, dedicate to a loved one, and make a donation if you're able to. Or you can ring up between the main office between 9 to 5, Monday to Friday, and make that dedication as well. We'll take those dedications over the phone. And you can return any of your packs until up at the end of 23rd of December, when they will be included. And also, a quick reminder that there are Light Up A Life badges. I forgot to put mine on, so I can't show you. Available in the shops as well. And as I mentioned at the beginning, there is our two face-to-face -face services next week in local churches. On Friday, on Friday, sorry, Tuesday the 7th of December at Silo Church in Tredega from 6.15pm. And the 9th of December at uh, St Peter's Church in Blyna, 6.15pm as well. So if you are able to attend those, we'd love to see you there as well. So now it just leaves me to say thank you very much for everybody who helped and thank you again for participating in our Light Up A Life service, our second virtual one, maybe our last. We'll wait and see how things pan out. And I would like to wish you a good evening and a very happy and merry Christmas and New Year. With all best wishes from everyone here at Hospice of the Valleys. Goodbye. <laughs>